You are listening to the Centropic Oracle, a science fiction and fantasy publisher of short stories that make you think and feel. I'm your guest host today, CB Drogi. If you listen to Centropic Oracle regularly, then you've heard my narration before. I'm here today because I'd like to tell you about a podcast that I host and narrate every week. Manowaker Studios' Flash Fiction Podcast. We feature a new piece of audio short fiction each Thursday. Stories range widely in genre and theme, but lean toward fantasy and science fiction. If you like Centropic Oracle, I think you'll also like Manowaker Studios' Flash Fiction Podcast. Find us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Find our submission guidelines on our website, at manawaker.com. That's M-A-N-A-W-A-K-E-R. Now to the story. A Thousand Final Days by Josh Warriner Countless people use this breakthrough for their own selfish purposes, whether for personal gain or selfishly believing that they could save the world. I had my own sort of selfish intentions. Not in making myself rich like so many others wanted. I was too old for that. My body ached, and I felt a kind of exhaustion that was far deeper than the young could understand. I had bought one of the devices, like many others. They were illegal, of course, but maintaining control of every single one was impossible. It was a small machine, no larger than an apple. It sat squarely in my hand and emitted a constant vibration unlike anything I had ever felt. This particular machine was meant for someone of my age and capabilities. Most of the devices could take a person's body through time, but this machine could transport my mind. My body was too old to be capable of the kind of trans-dimensional travel necessary to be brought back in time. Instead, my body remained, and my mind, my spirit, was sent back, returned to where I belonged. The day was calm. A winter's storm had left a blanket of snow blown against our windows, leaving nothing of the world but each other. I started the morning as usual, with a coffee for myself and tea for her. She never did warm up to coffee. We lay in bed for much of the day. She smelled the way she always did, a sweet, sugary smell. It was the kind that had left me intoxicated with her the day we met, and for the countless years that had passed since. At three, I made her lunch a small bowl of tomato soup. By then, that was all she could handle. Some days I would help her eat, but that day she ate with care, her frail but gentle hands moving the soup to her mouth with a shaking spoon. The energy she radiated felt pensive but serene. She had a kind of beauty that never faded, especially for me. It was a beauty from behind the eyes that showed an unmatched, lustrous soul. We reminisced, as we often would, about a life well spent. We had accomplished a lot in our lifetime partnership and had much to be proud of. Her more than me, I know. I had never matched her brilliance, but I had done my duty as a partner to keep up with her the best I could. I made dinner and put on music. A kind acoustic guitar serenaded as we swayed gently in bed, the closest we could get to dancing the way we used to. It was a perfect sort of day. I believe that's why she chose it to be her last. There's a kind of love that never leaves you. Even when the one you feel it for goes one way or another. Much like her beauty, 
It was a love that radiated, a love that I could live in for an eternity. But like all things, love ends. All we can hope for is that vow of until death do us part holds true and savor each moment we get before our time comes. I'm grateful that I got to be there, to help her through it all, just like she had helped me all our lives. It was the least I could do for her. It was that day that I always went back to. And we lived that day a thousand times over, as often as my aging spirit could take. We hope you enjoyed A Thousand Final Days by Josh Warner, read by C.B. Drogi. If you'd like to learn more about the author and narrator of this story, or make a donation to them, follow the story page link in the description. If you would like to submit a story for consideration or apply to be a narrator, a link to our submission guidelines is in the description. This story is copyrighted 2020 by the Centropic Oracle.